بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هون الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى الصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اجتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من عمل صالحا من ذكر أو أنثى وهو مؤمن فلنحيينه فلنحيينه حياة طيبة ولنجزينهم أجرهم بأحسن ما كانوا يعملون صدق الله العظيم Today, inshallah, we'll spend some time with the Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was known for his wisdom, his intelligence, a very sharp Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a type of person that when some Sahaba Ridwanullahi were discussing about different rulers of the world and their intelligence, Umar radiallahu anhu had to stop them and say, how can you even remember anyone else while you have this person amongst you? And we know that Umar radiallahu anhu would not get impressed by anyone's intelligence just like that. Because of his own intelligence. And his own wisdom, his own understanding. So he won't be just impressed by any person. And a sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For whom Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made this dua. اللهم اجعله هاديا مهديا واهد به يا الله guide him and guide other people through him at another occasion when he was bringing the water for wudu for Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم that was at a time when Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه got sick and this Sahabi was waiting for an opportunity to serve Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم and while he's serving him and he's getting some water for wudu for him, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made this other dua for him. Allahumma allimhu al-kitab. Ya Allah, teach him the meanings of the book. Waqih al-azab. And protect him against the punishment of akhirah. <coughs> and... He is a Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam trusted for the greatest thing he had with him. He trusted him for something that was the most valuable to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he spent his whole life protecting it. And that was the wahi, the revelation. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would call this Sahabi after he became Muslim. He would call him normally. Most of the time he would call this Sahabi to write the rahi, wahi and the revelation for him. So he wrote most of the portion of Quran that was revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the last years of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life. If you don't know who he is. The uncle of all the mu'mineen. Because his sister was Ummul Mu'mineen, the mother of the mu'mineen. And mother's brother is uncle. So in that case, he's considered to be the uncle of all the mu'mineen. And that is 
سيدنا معاوية بن أبي سفيان رضي الله عنه معاوية رضي الله عنه was a type of person who would never allow emotions to rule his life. This was something that all the Sahaba witnessed about him. He was a type of person who would always think deep about each and every situation. And before I mention anything more about this great Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I will have to confess and say and let everyone know that I will be only highlighting some of the important points in his life, in the life of the Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Otherwise, going into the details of it, we don't have no time for it. And believe me, months are not enough to cover the life of this person because Muawiyah radiallahu anhu is a Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was the governor of Sham and Syria for about 20 years then he was the ruler of the whole ummah for next 20 years 40 years of rule Sayyidina Muawiyah radiallahu anhu when you study about him and as I was spending the time studying, trying to find as much material as possible about the Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was amazing. You can just keep on reading and be amazed of his intelligence, of his understanding. And for that reason, I had to do this that I would keep the books in a place and read and study at a place where no one is watching me because sometimes you see me just reading and shaking my head. Sometimes I'm laughing while studying the life of the Sahabi. That subhanAllah, how did he get all of this information, intelligence and understanding, that deep understanding of these matters? He was raised in a house and in an atmosphere that was totally against Islam because Abu Sufyan was his father and Abu Sufyan was the leader of the Kuffar of Quraysh at that time and I'm sure most of you will remember the name of his mother also Hind, the wife of Abu Sufyan and if you can't recall any details about her I will just remind you by telling you this that the person who cut the chest of Hamza radiallahu anhu and chewed his liver was Hind radiallahu anha who became Muslim later on. In other words, it telling, it's telling us some of the qualities of this woman that were later on used for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he was raised in that home where he always hear things against Islam. A place that's full of hatred for Islam and especially for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And especially after the battle of Badr when his mother Hind lost her father, her son, and one of her brothers. In other words, Muawiyah, this young Muawiyah, lost his grandfather, his brother, and his uncle. And here we can see still this young man did not allow his emotions to rule his life. And he stated, thinking very seriously about all the events that are taking place and trying to come to a right conclusion. After all of this, lost his brother, his grandfather and his uncle and many other leaders, but that's within the immediate family. And still he says, I never let my emotions rule me. And I always used to compare situations and try to come to the right conclusion. 
and here something took place in Makkah Mukarramah that seemed on the surface that it's a defeat to Muslims. But in reality, <coughs> it was a type of victory that normally people could not see, but the results were seen later on. And that was when the Kuffar of Quraysh, and before I mention this, let's at the same time as we are studying this event, see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan worked. And how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala planned things. وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهِ They make their plans and Allah makes His plans. وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ Allah is the best planner. And we don't even understand how things are planned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here, they captured a sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whose name was Khubayb. And finally, they arranged him to kill him. Making the long story short, the time when they were about to kill Khubayb radiallahu anhu, Muawiyah, young boy, was also there with all the other leaders of Quraysh. His father is the leader, so he's ahead of everyone. And Khubayb, in the last moments of his life, he started making some dua. Allahumma ahsihim adada. Ya Allah, keep account of each and everyone that's over here. Waqtulhum <coughs> badada. And destroy each and every one of them. Wala tuqqi minhum ahada. And don't leave none of them. Muawiyah says, At that time, my father threw me down on the ground because in those days, we had a belief that if a person makes dua against you and you lay down on the ground, the dua won't affect you. So his father, father pushed him down and he was laying on the ground. He says, I started thinking, if my father really believes these people are wrong, why would he throw me down on the ground? Why is he afraid of the prayer of Khubayb? The boy is thinking. He's going deep down to the, ro to the roots of the matters. He says, that was the first step that made me think very seriously about Islam. Subhanallah. One of the Sahaba is dying. And at the same time, planting Iman into the hearts of many of those that are there. In fact, planting Iman into the house of the leader of the Kufr. Allah's plans. And Muawiyah says, from there on I started thinking very seriously about Islam. And now as he started thinking more deep, the boy is intelligent. And he's not working emotionally. He's putting things together and trying to understand matters in the right way. And finally he says, one day I decided that Islam is a true deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no matter who opposes Islam, Islam is a true deen. Whether that's my father, be it my father or my mother or anyone else, I know they are not holding to the truth. Now for some time, he is going in, in, through an internal war with his thoughts. What should he do now? Should he inform his parents? Should he just leave? Again, the boy is wise. He thought for a long time and he said, finally, I came to the conclusion that I must inform my mother. And he informed his mother. And of course, we can understand what could be the reaction of that mother who's full of hatred against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She threatened him. She was very upset. But now she's also caught in a very difficult situation because if she informs her husband, 
he might start torturing her son and may even go to the extent of killing him. And if she does not inform him, one day she may wake up in the morning and find out that her son is in Medina Munawwara with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What should she do? And finally, the hate of Islam, hatred for Islam took precedent. And she decided to inform her husband no matter what he does. And she informed him. But she was surprised when she saw that he did not give it any importance. He did not give this even any importance. And he just took it very lightly because he himself was going through the similar type of thoughts. Subhanallah. And Muawiyah radiallahu anhu says, I became Muslim before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came for Umratul Qada and Umratul Qada was in the seventh year of Hijrah. But I did not announce my Islam and I did not inform other people about my Islam. In the eighth year of Hijrah, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam conquered Makkah Mukarramah, at that time, Muawiyah radiallahu anhu went and he announced his Islam. And that was the time when his father and mother also announced Islam and took the Shahada. Abu Sufyan became Muslim in the eighth year of Hijrah. And he was the leader of the Kuffar of Quraysh. He himself narrates his story of Islam that is very interesting, but of course time is chasing us very fast. I'll go very quickly over these few incidents to wrap up this topic and finish it. Abu Sufyan anhu, says, initially when I took my shahada, I wasn't convinced with Islam. Yes, I knew that this, this may be the true religion, but I wasn't convinced that I'm ready for it. So he said, I, as I just pretended that I'm becoming Muslim, sitting in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I was thinking, what should I do now? What should be the next step in my life? Should I go and get the clan of Thaqif that were in Taif and were a strong clan? Should I go and bring them to attack Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Makkah? Or should I go and gather all the Arab nations and make them attack Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He says, while I'm thinking about these, and I'm lost in my thoughts, here Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hits me on my chest with his hand. He says, as soon as he hit me there, I just felt that someone woke me up. And the most surprising thing to me was what happened next, and that was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to me, إِذَنْ يُخْزِيكَ Allah." In that case, Allah will humiliate you. Now, people around him cannot understand what's going on. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is hitting the man with his chest and telling him, in that case, Allah will humiliate you. But he was able to put things together, okay? I will go and bring people to attack. And he's telling me, in that case, Allah will humiliate you. He said, Ya Rasulullah, inni atubu ilallah, I seek Allah's forgiveness. I was never convinced about this deen up to this point, but now I'm convinced. He went back to his wife to see what's the situation at home now. And of course, he went over there planning how to convince his wife. And it's not easy to convince him about anything. So he says, as soon as I went home, first thing I wanted to throw some words to see how strong she is against Islam now. He said, the first thing I said to her, and at that time, Sahaba were performing the tawaf. And we were, the Mecca was shaking with their sounds of labbaik. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik la sharika laka labbaik. And some are reciting takbirat. And here, everyone is hearing these loud voices of labbaik and takbirat. So I asked her, I said, what do you think about all of these people? 
She didn't know that I was Muslim yet. She said to me, I have never seen in my life Allah being worshipped in true sense the way I see it today. So I asked her, what stops you now? She says, from what? From going to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and taking your shahada. He says, I was only waiting to let you know. And now you know it. And I'm going. And she, not only that she went by herself, she went to the houses in her neighborhood, gathered all the ladies from those homes, reminding them of what is going on by the Kaaba. Have you heard Labbaik like this before in your life? And everyone says, no, then let's go to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and be part of it. And here she gets a large group of people with her and goes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They all have a niqab. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam don't recognize them. And especially she really covered herself in a way that he won't recognize who she is because she was one of the wanted people because of Hamza radiallahu anhu. And here she goes and says, Ya Rasulullah, we are here to take our shahada and take the bay'ah. All of intelligence, uh, intelligence on your hand, Ya Rasulullah. We are very willing to take the bay'ah on your hand, Ya Rasulullah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started giving them the bay'ah. During the bay'ah, he realized that the one that is leading all of these women is Hind and asked her, are you Hind? Yes, I am Hind, Ya Rasulullah. And now you know that I have taken my shahada and by taking the shahada, all the previous sins you promised that are forgiven. He said, yes. And he continued with his bay'ah. After she finished taking the bay'ah, she said, Ya Rasulullah, I will tell you one thing now. Up to this day, I never hated anyone in my life as much as I hated you. And today I tell you this, I don't love anyone as much as I love you. Subhanallah, see the situation, how when Allah gives the hidayah, this is what hidayah means. Abu Sufyan, the father of Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, went with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to Taif to fight against Thaqif. This, this is to tell us the chain that came into the life of these people after, the, after Islam. And what type of Islam they had and Iman they had in their hearts. One of the arrows came in, hit Abu Sufyan in his eye. The eye came out and was attached to his, his place with one of the wings that was there that was hanging. He went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, look at my eye. It came out. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, Abu Sufyan, if you want, I can place it back in its place and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will get your eye back. And if you want, get it back in Jannah. Abu Sufyan right away realized getting get it in Jannah simply means a promise to, from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that I would go to Jannah right away without giving it a second, a second thought. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I would get it in Jannah. Coming back to Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam chose him to be of the kuttab al wahi which means the people who would write the revelation for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As this family became Muslim and Muawiyah radiallahu anhu became so close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, everyone was happy and the happiest person was someone who normally histories don't talk too much about. That was a person that was away from people's sight. No one was seeing that person. And no one knew how happy that person was at that time. You know who that person was? Umm al Mu'mineen. The mother of the Mu'mineen. What was her name? Umm Habiba radiallahu anha, the daughter of Abu Sufyan, who became, who had become Muslim long time back, and she was married to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and she was Umm al Mu'mineen. And that is the one when her father visited her in the state of Kufr, 
visited her in Medina Munawwara and he went to her home right away she picked up the mattress of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and asked him to sit on the ground he asked her daughter do you think I'm too great for this mattress or this mattress you think that I'm not good to sit on this mattress she said no you have the dirt of kufr on you I cannot allow you to sit on this mattress of the nabuwa Muawiyah radiyallahu anhu one day he says he was writing the Rahi for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some ayahs were revealed and he was writing them for him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after dictating those ayahs, he said to Muawiyah radiyallahu anhu, Muawiyah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day is going to give you the rule of my ummah. Make sure you be just and humble to my ummah. He knew that now this responsibility will come to him. And Umar radiallahu anhu chose him to be the governor of Sham, his brother Yazid. Subhanallah, you look at the whole family, it's surprising. His brother Yazid is the one who conquered Sham. He is the one who conquered Damascus, Damascus. During the time of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, then he was the governor of Damascus until he passed away, and then Muawiyah radiallahu anhu was chosen to be the his replacement by Umar radiallahu anhu, and he was ruling that area for twenty years until he became the ruler for the whole Ummah, and that was for another twenty years. There were. Differences between Sayyidina Muawiyah radiallahu anhu and Ali radiallahu anhu that we all know about and histories unfortunately bring everything about the situation that most of it is not even true. And here we need to remember we have different sources of learning of getting our information. The most authentic source is the book of Allah. The second trend is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and then histories are just the sayings of people from here and there. Most of the time, we don't know, we don't even know who those people are, what type of feelings they carry for these people that are they're talking about. And when there is an event in the history, normally emotions are attached to it. I don't like a person, I would say them something, and the historian is recording it. When we look at the ahadith, ahadith are telling us the true picture and giving us the true picture of Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een. With all of these du'as of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa may Allah guide you, may Allah guide people through you, may Allah protect you against the hellfire. And then the trust for writing the revelation. Differences were there. And on both sides there were Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een. This is why when Hassan al-Busri rahimahullah was asked about it, he said, and he, what a beautiful reply that he gave. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected us from shedding the bloods of Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi majma'een, so we should not eat their flesh. Which means, if we did not shed their blood, then we should not backbite them and eat their flesh. You say this way, you say the other way. They might be forgiven and we go to the wrong side. So these are the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is why, when once he was asked, who is better, Muawiyah radiallahu anhu or Umar bin Abdul Aziz, he got very upset. He said to that person, you don't even know your belief and your deen? He said, what? I'm only asking the difference between two people. He said, yes, but you should realize you are comparing a Sahabi with a person who is not a Sahabi. And one moment of a Sahabi within the, in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam better than the life of the whole ummah. And then he said, the dust that was flying from the shoes of the horse of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam getting into the nostrils of Muawiyah radiallahu anhu is better than Umar bin Abdul Aziz. Umar bin Abdul Aziz rahimahullah says, I saw a dream. In my dream I saw that Ali and Muawiyah radiallahu anhumah, both of them were presented to 
رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم said none sahaba should leave whoever is not a sahabi should leave the room so he said I had to leave all the other people left with me and only sahaba were allowed in the room they closed the room after a few minutes Ali radiallahu anhu came out saying that I'm very happy I'm going to Jannah because the decision was made in my favor few minutes later Muawiyah radiallahu anhu came out he's very happy he said I'm going to Jannah because all of my deeds were forgiven and this is why after knowing the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the trust of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the best thing for us not to just go by what people said about these people from the history we should look at what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about these people in his ahadith may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our deen, our iman and keep it pure and, pure and clean and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep all of us on the straight path on sirat al-mustaqeem aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum